Redditors who left companies that non-stop talk about their amazing culture, what was the cringe moment that made you realize you had to get out? When my boss planned an office day trip to a car show and brewery, then only invited the guys in the office. Even worse, when one of the women said, We should all go. He said, No, no, but why don't you girls have a spa day, instead? He also put on a hella racist accent, whenever he talked about his many Asian clients. Obviously, there were other issues, but those two stand out. Go f yourself, Tony. I worked at this business, that was real keen on telling everyone, they were like a family, and chastising me for not going to company parties etc, but that also refused to pay overtime, and expected me to work late two, or three times a week, as well as doing a 14 hour a day twice a month for stocking slash end of month. Apparently, because we're a family, we were all expected to chip in on the big days, except it was literally just as bottom tier workers, who had to stay late. I quit that place, and never looked back. Bought out by an equity group. New president on call with thousands of employees says. We have two kinds of employees, those that work a tremendous number of hours, and those that should find another company to work for. We have two types of employees, former employees, and morons. They changed the title of the receptionist to director of first impressions. FYI got that idea from the book, The Big Five for Life by John Strzelecki. One of its themes, is how one can be a good manager, and names like that one are suggested so the person feels important. Executive, Delivery Boy Last year I was working as a subcontractor, and I was assigned a new place of work. Just two weeks after I started the new boss wanted to hire me. He put down the contract where, compared to my current contract, pay was down 25%, average weekly hours went up by 20%, vacation days went down by 10%, and I wouldn't have a company car, for personal use anymore. Before he actually handed me the contract to read it he said, I will only make you this offer once, but it's only valid if you change all your pictures on your social media, and you sell your car. It's too flashy for our company. Um, how about no? Why did he want you to change your pictures? He used his employees as free advertisement. You had to get pictures done with work clothes, yes, for your private Facebook slash WhatsApp slash whatever, and he even had decals for all of the employees' cars. He can't put this in the contract, but he just wouldn't hand you the contract you if you didn't agree beforehand. This is for Flight Center headquartered in Brisbane, Australia, but they are a global company trading under many names, I think it's Liberty Travel in the States. Anyway, everything about the company internally screams cringe. Everyone treats the CEO, like a f god. His name is Screw, and when he takes a selfie it's called a Screwfy, uck, and they opened a foreign exchange ATM, at the head office that they called a Scrutum which sounds like scrotum if you ask me. It's ridiculous. I have never understood the culture of CEO worship. My first job out of college I had a coworker come in one day all giddy, like freaking out with excitement. He said, he had just passed the CEO in the lobby. I was like, yeah no sh man. He works here too. Had a wall of crazy where the sea EO wanted to spend 20k on cool, and edgy stuff for the office, and staff could make suggestions, slides, beanbags, napping pods, etc. Project was scrapped, when the top suggestions ended up being, desks, chairs, working heating, working Wi-Fi, health insurance. I learned at an internship that, we work hard and play hard means. We want you to work 75 hour weeks, but sometimes we'll put donuts in the break room. Not my company, but a company from a neighboring building. They had an entire area devoted to foosball, pinball, billiards, console gaming, and video booths on the ground floor, and it was clearly visible, because of the glass windows on street level. Oddly enough, nobody ever used them, and the place was almost always empty, save for a few people who use the internet kiosks. When I learned a friend worked there, I asked why nobody would want to take the opportunity, to use the awesome looking recreational facility, 
He told me that people who do use the facility often, found it used against them during performance evaluations, even when their use wasn't excessive at all. After a while, word got around, and they started avoiding the place altogether. The irony is that their recruitment ads always touts, a culture of work hard play hard. Ha! Huh. The place I am just about to leave, handed in my notice last week, bought a pool table for the, breakout space, earlier in the year. It's horrible, and cheap, and not fun to play on anyway. I've seen colleagues get ushered back to their desks part way through a game at 12.59, because they were in danger of overstaying their lunch break. They always make sure to show potential new hires, that they have it though. They also bought an Xbox with no games, and then complained about wasting money, because nobody is using it, um? This happened a couple of weeks ago. When HR, sent out an email to management, excluding me, and about two other people, telling them to fraudulently, leave good reviews on Glassdoor, and to, coerce others to do the same. Not me, but my husband worked for two weeks, for a family-owned, and operated, business that touted how important, family was, and that they were all one happy family. My husband was on his way to drop our, at the time two-year-old son off at daycare before work, when my son threw up all over himself. Husband called his employer to tell them what happened, and that he needed to take our son home, and clean him up, but he'd be an ASAP. His manager told him he needed to get his priorities straight. He responded with, You know what? You're right, I won't be back in at all. He was still working part-time, at his previous job where they had been sad, that he was leaving, so he called them, and told them to put him back on the schedule full-time. The family business is currently in the process of liquidating assets, before going out of business, and I cackle every time I drive past it. When I went to my first corporate manager's rally, I thought this will be cool, free catered lunch, and it counted as a work day. Then they started the rally with the company cheer. I'm like what the f***, we're adults, why are we cheering? Looked around, and way too many people were into this cheer. I realized that job wasn't going to be for me. Edit, for all those asking I was working as a GM for Domino's Pizza at the time. When our university's VP explained that the goal of every tenured faculty member, was to write enough grants to pay our salaries, and replace us with teachers assistants. Every semester, ideally every undergrad class. Also, we'd be under a hiring freeze, but could feel free to be creative, and use temporary grant money to hire tenured faculty. Also, we'd all be paying an extra $250 per year, in parking fees to fund a new student parking lot. Dear Lord, was I glad I'd already decided to leave. We, the management team spent months working with a business coach, trying to collectively come up with meaningful core values. We devoted a ton of time to it, and really tried to decide which direction, we wanted to take the company culture. Everybody agreed on teamwork, reliability, a couple others that I can't remember now, and then one day the owner came in, and called a meeting. He sat us down in the boardroom, and told us he spent all weekend brainstorming, and had decided on the core values. They were meaningful, ownership, neighborhood, engagement, you, does anybody see what that spells? He literally wanted it to be, money, and just came up with words that sort of worked the way you do in elementary school writing your name poem. He rebranded the entire company from t-shirts with giant first letters, and smaller letters for the rest of the word straight down the arms, to plagues, wraps on the cars, every thing. And that's when we all knew it was going to get bad. Money is great, but it was mortifying walking slash driving around with that plastered everywhere. I was in sales, and it was an alright office. Had a keg in the break room, that we could get to in Fridays. One day they bring all the salesmen into the break room, and tell us all to grab a beer. They then told us that, from now, until the rest of the year, about five months, we weren't going to be paid commissions. Which was about 70% of our money. Four of us just got up, and left. 
We treat our employees like family. Ignores harassment claims, hires from outside the company, refuses to give out decent pay, will write you up for doing overtime, but the CEO just bought himself a new BMW. I hate that place. This is what the woman who interviewed me said. Here at Cheapskate Architects, we don't often do all-nighters for our customers, but when we do, it's a real pizza party. Also we don't pay overtime, we do it for the love. And your wage is 22k, even though you are an architect. And also, I won't be there, because I'm HR management, because I'm married to the director. Yes, we need an HR department, even though there's three employees. It's a real pizza party. Also we don't pay overtime, and your wage is 22k. Dude. I make more than that, delivering those pizzas part time. Ha ha. A bloke I used to work with told me about, how a senior manager at his old work did this to someone. The guy was apparently a freaking genius, IT systems engineers, and was considered the best of the couple hundred people there, but he had serious social anxiety issues. The client was their biggest client by far, like 25% of the income, or something. Manager blames the guy, even though it had nothing to do with him. Sets up meeting with the client, and when they arrived, grabbed the guy from his desk, and took him to the meeting, in other words no notice. Chewed him out in front of the client, making a big show of it. Guy wasn't able to respond, as he just shut down, and cried while the manager ignored it, and continued. They lost the client later that week, and only won them back during the ensuing tender process, at a significantly reduced income, because the senior manager had been fired by that point, was apparently already on thin ice before this, because he was a super tick, and him not being a manager, was part of the contract and negotiations. This is the definition of a shitstorm. When working at a shoe shop, assistant supervisor was assessing people's performances. He came to me, and said. You, you greeted the customer well, so I'm giving you a big smiley face. And marked it on his checklist. But the customer didn't buy any shoes. So I'm just gonna mark that as a frowny face. I got my 50% employee discount on my shoes, and just walked away into the sunset to never go back. They're bragging about how, they had 30 plus people willing to replace me, and then showing the file with the applications, after I refused to take a longer lunch to cut my overtime. When I was asked to sleep with a potential client. Edit, the rest of the story. At the time I was in my early 20s. Looking back, I realized I had more going on looks wise, than I knew back then. This was decades ago. My boss, business owner, always told us that he thought of the office as one big family. He also referred to the female employees as, his girls. A new client is coming into the office. My boss called me into his office, and told me he was going to give me the company credit card, so I could take the potential new client out for dinner, and drinks. He told me to. Sleep with him. We need this client, if everyone wants to get paid. Nice added pressure. I said no, and the next day quit. A couple of months earlier my boss had invited me over to his house for dinner with his family, and a swim in his pool, because he said he knew how hard I had been working. I was a little surprised that he finally noticed, and thought it was kind that he wanted to do something nice for me. I get there, and his wife, and kids are gone, but there is a 25-year-old guy in his pool. The son of a client who just got out of the army. He told me he was trying to fix me up on a date, because I needed to get out more. Like an idiot I believed him. It wasn't until later that I realized that he was hoping I'd show more interest in the guy. I found out later, that he had asked all the female employees at one point, to sleep with clients. The secretary actually did. She was a young, single mom, and was worried she'd be fired if she said no. After I quit she told me, she wished she had the option to quit. I didn't realize what she was saying, until we talked later. At the time his daughter was around 4 years old. When I quit I asked him how old would his daughter have to be before he asked her to sleep with clients. I thought he was going to hit me. I have a thousand stories about working at this place. The guy was an unethical idiot. A dangerous combination, 
but I learned a lot about how to not run a business from him. I've owned my own business for 30 years now. I've never asked an employee to sleep with clients or even go out for drinks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell.